In this video, I want to show you how you can build a fully custom AI website interface that is connected to your VoiceFlow project. This is a great skill to learn if you want to build much more custom applications and don't want to be restricted to that little chatbot interface. This is going to give you a lot more customization as to how the information is actually presented to the user. The particular demo that I've built out here is going to be an e-commerce product recommendation demo, simply just to prove the concept of connecting the VoiceFlow project to a website interface. So to get right into it, this is a Webflow page that I simply created out and I'm going to be showing you exactly how to build this and how this is all connected in a minute, but I'm just going to give you a quick demo on how this works. So if I go ahead and say I am looking for a small dog bed, I hit send and we're able to connect to a VoiceFlow project using the VoiceFlow dialogue API. So I'm going to go through all of this in a second, but we've gotten a response back from VoiceFlow. And now I'm going to go ahead and say, and essentially just answer the question they've given us here. With some more detail, I want it to be durable and soft. Send. And so we're going to be sending in another question. It is going to go ahead and answer my question that I've given through. And we're going to head and been given three product recommendations in this full custom website interface. This has taken the chatbot VoiceFlow Dialog API and it has displayed the information on a Webflow page in a custom format that I designed. And this is gonna be an incredible skill to know how to use. So jumping into the VoiceFlow project, this is a pretty simple setup going on. Essentially, I'm just capturing the user's uh, initial problem that they have. If they've got a need or product that they want, we're taking that and we're running it through a little if condition. We are just checking, um, checking if that is a valid query to be asking. This is not necessary for this actual build. This is just some sort of other stuff to sort of complete it, but we're just going through and sending in an, an AI response into a response AI, capturing uh, the second question. So that second time I asked that question, and then we're just going ahead and creating another response AI to display that. And then we've got that carousel here that we saw uh, below the second question or the second answer that we saw. So if we go ahead and go over into Webflow, what I've got here is a Webflow project now. So this is connecting it to Webflow. However, this is essentially the same setup and system that I can show you that can be used for any HTML website, any website provider. All we're really doing is using some JavaScript and some HTML. And so we can do this really on anything. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to show you how we can connect this to a Webflow build. So if you are following along on Webflow, what you need to do is set up a text field, a button, and then essentially that's it just for sending queries. From there, what I have also got is a hidden, hidden layer here, hidden section. And so I'm able to hide that using the layout display buttons. And this is holding the carousel. So I've gone ahead and just created a section that has a container, which has some columns. Obviously we've got three columns and in each column is just a heading, an image and a button. Um, so if you're not a Webflow expert, don't worry. It's a drag and drop system. So you can drag stuff in, essentially just follow this outline here put the sections, containers and columns and put them all in there. This is just for the layout and the custom layout that I've built here. But obviously if you're just wanting to test this out and test how it works, you're able to build out a pretty basic system using HTML and JavaScript and just running that in the browser. Um, and if you aren't heavy on code, you can use ChatGPT to tell you how to code it and build that website for you. And it will do a pretty good job since it's gonna be a pretty basic setup um, that this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide this again. So I'll show you why we're hiding that. Um, and what we need to do is go into the sort of code of uh, Webflow. So we can hit the settings button and you need to go down into the sort of code area here. So I do believe you do need an upgraded subscription to Webflow to get access to this code area. So once again, obviously if you're not using Webflow or a paid Webflow, this, this code, this script, this JavaScript can be used on any website. It all it's simply doing is just uh, reading and writing some information. So I'll demo exactly what's going on. So Initially in our script here, um, well, what I'll do is have all this information, this entire bit of code within my resource hub, my free resource hub in the description. And what you can do is take that code, put it into ChatGPT, and simply just say, what, what is this code or what's going on in this code? Take out little bits of snippets and just ask it what's going on. Um, and that'll be just a very easy way to sort of just learn um, and go along with it. Um, and so yeah, so to get started, we've got a function that generates a random user ID. So a function is just a sort of way to trigger um, a small little snippet of code. So we'll call a function and it will just run this little bit that's uh, contained in the function. Um, but this function is generating a random user ID. So when we are running requests to VoiceFlow and we are talking to a transcript or we're talking to the bot that generates a transcript, it requires a user ID to a sort of 
uh, identify unique users between each other. So we generate a user ID and we're able to then use that user ID to identify different types of people and different types of conversations. So we can keep chat memory and we can um, identify who's who in these sort of chats. So we need to create a user ID. Um, and the reason we want a function for that is because whenever somebody loads on the web page, we want to start that conversation again. So we need to just create a function right here. Um, so once again, you could just take this, put in chat GPT and tell you how it works. Um, but this is just generating a random string of characters that I'm using and assigning to the, um, into a user ID variable here, user ID. So I'm just assigning that variable. And so that's all we're doing. We're creating a 10 character random user ID, as it says here. And then once that's run, that's done. From there, we are going to be using that user ID in our send voice flow request function. Um, and this is essentially just the voice flow dialogue API. We're making a request to the API so you can get access to that API information. In voice flow, if you go to the integrations tab and go to the sort of dialogue API section, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of code API called the, the bottom here. And so if you aren't familiar with the dialogue API, we're essentially just, we can send a question to the dialogue API it's going to send us back some information that just says um, this is what we would have displayed on the chatbot, um, but here it is in sort of some text format. And so we're then able to take that information and do whatever we want with it. So we're just putting in that API call here with the user ID variable um, inserted where that uh, the user ID would have went. Once we've done that, we've got an import text um, that's come from when we run the function, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we're just putting the input text um, where we're actually typing the question. So we're sending a question that the user's typed in that input box. And when they hit send, we're triggering this function. So we're coming down a little bit. We've got a handle carousel response. So I'll just go over to that for function uh, before I get back to that. Handle carousel response. So all I'm really doing here is whenever the carousel, the word carousel comes back in the dialogue API response, I'm going to run uh, a set of code that just uh, will showcase all of the information that we've gotten back um, based on that the carousels popped up. So you can see here, uh, if the carousel pops up, we're gonna be um, showing product one name, product one image, product one button. And we're doing that for product two and three as well. And we're just saying, if the carousel has popped up, show the product one, show product two, show product three, um, as well as unhide. You can see it is style display block. We're actually now unhiding the layer that I was showing you earlier. We're unhiding it through the code. Um, and then we're just obviously having all those three products pop up. We're populating all the, the heading, the image and the button. And then we're able to obviously then illustrate this sort of carousel function um, as in a custom interface without using VoiceFlow's uh, native build. So that's how we're able to do that. Once again, can take this code and put it into ChatGPT and tell you how it works. Um, there's obviously a lot of documentation around JavaScript. It's a quite a popular uh, code platform. So um, once again, coming back to here, this is just saying if the request to voice flow contains carousel, uh, run the carousel function and populate those fields and show it to the user. So coming down from this, we're just gonna have a look at the event listener. So the event listener is just when the button is clicked, uh, we're gonna run that voice flow request function. So uh, the reason we've got input text as well is because when we hit the button, it will grab the input text from that uh, little bit of the input box we got. So we're just grabbing the information from the input box, sending that to the function and then running that through the function um, from the request. So easily easily set up, hit the button, run the request, get the answer, display the information. From here, function type out the response. So when we demo, when I demo that system, um, it types out the, the response sort of uh, as it goes. Um, and so this is just a sort of an illusion sort of uh, that's created through this type out response function. It's not actually generating as it's going, um, like it's not thinking about it, it's already been generated and outputted, but we're just sort of doing this manually as I thought this is a more of an interactive experience and something that feels more sort of alive coming out of the bot rather than just sort of uh, instantly pasting all of that text all at once. So uh, that is it. That is all of the, the code required to output this system. I'm going to have obviously once again, this code all within my free resource hub link in the description. You're going to get able to get access to this and you can just put this in chat GPT and tell you how it works. Um, and so this is obviously integrated on Webflow here, but that JavaScript is in, uh, it's, it's universal. So you can take that code and put it into some HTML. You can put that into uh, any website provider that you're using and you can have it interact with the website however you'd like. And so the way I'm interacting here on Webflow is that I've just got a series of 
IDs assigned to each of my sort of um, content uh, within the page. So you can see here ID voice flow input and then essentially it's assigned to voice flow input. So when I run the function, grab the, the value of voice flow input. And so it's able to just use the IDs as the sort of uh, main sort of communication point between each of my elements on the page. And ultimately that's it. We're able to be have this sort of dynamic experience based on a simple request and message to VoiceFlow to bring us quite an interactive uh, experience. And because we're doing this via API and we're doing this over VoiceFlow, once that's set up, we can go ahead and start changing the names of these things. We can change the images, we can change the prompts, we can change everything on VoiceFlow and will automatically update and be changed to the requests made through Webflow. So once it's set up, it's good to go. So I hope that has been a helpful video and understanding how you can build quite a custom interface using JavaScript, whether you want to integrate that on Webflow or not, it's going to be an incredibly useful skill to building out much more custom applications to get access to the much broader and wider applications of building out these systems. So once again, if you want to get access to 13 plus chatbot and automation templates, as well as this code that I've shown in this video, you can go ahead and sign up to my free resource hub link in the description. And if you are a business owner, who is looking to get a custom system built out for your business, you can go ahead and book a call through my calendar link and we can have a discussion to talk about your project.